Uh, until someone has questions, uh, there's this thing that I made that I'm kind of happy I figured out. Um, so it's just a a couple of pieces of cable effectively. It's kind of sketchy style because it was for the um, uh, Steven Universe which is an animated uh, like cartoon series. So this kind of slightly sketchy style is okay. Um, but it's posable so that they aren't just stuck in this loop or this orientation or whatever. I can turn off preview invisibility which lets me see invisible stuff and I have these nodes so if I scope in I can just like drag the ends to like this one needs to get to the next part of the uh, cable so I put it over there and that one's plugging into a um, game console or whatever uh, and you can kind of rotate these nodes and it drags the painting around and you can get uh, nice kind of loop loops and whatnot um, and same with the other end um, it, it, it isn't it doesn't always react exactly how you think it would but you can just fiddle with it with the positions of these nodes until it looks right for whatever scene you're making um, yeah, how did I make that? Um, I will tell you in a moment. Quick swig of water. Um, so, uh, so if you're looking for to use it or whatever, just look for sketchy cable, or my PSN is supposer. Um, but I'll kind of remake it so you can see how it's done. Okay, um, so I think first we'll make the painting. Um, I won't worry about like flex and all this kind of stuff right now. I'll just, for now, I'll just, um, show you the basic basics of how it's done. Um, a good thing to do is use draw flex. Um, brush flex is, oh let me zoom in, uh, the lighter you press on R2 the, the lighter it is the more see through it is and then you pull R2 harder and then it's um, less see through. Uh, but if that's not what you want you can use the this is in uh, tools by the way there's brush flex and draw flex draw flex is the size of the fleck is determined by how hard you pull R2 so pull it all the way and it's big and then pull it a little bit and it's small and you can kind of go big and small it's quite hard to it I think it would take a lot of practice to get um, good at really controlling this um, the size of it well but uh, that's how you do it and that's how uh, you kind of make sure that it doesn't go transparent in, in places so um, so I'll scale that down first I'll just check my settings cool um, So let's make a simple loop loop to loop like that. Um and you can just re retry that again and again until you get something you like. Um for the actual ones I use the moves so it has a bit of like depth to the loop as well. Um and you can add stuff like um looseness if there's like some gaps that like there's tiny little gaps if you don't like those you can loosen it a bit and then each individual fleck will become bigger 
and kind of close those gaps and you can give it some impasto which effectively makes it thicker in a slightly different way for each type of fleck type but um, you can fiddle with that however you like so then the actual um, first I'll show you so you tweak the painting go to the physical tab and turn that on and then it kind of wobbles a bit and you don't actually I think for this you probably don't need any floppiness but um, I'll just leave it there uh, then you make the nodes the nodes don't have to be anything special just any sculpt so I just make a cube you can oh, you can lower the sculpture detail as much as you want because you'll never see it um, so then it will be really cheap on graphics thermo if it's high detail it will take more and more graphics thermo um, so if we uh, yeah tweak the sculpture turn off collidable and visible and now normally it won't be visible at all um, to see stuff that are, is are invisible while you're editing you can go to show and hide and turn off preview invisibility so if that's checked then invisible stuff will be invisible so if it's unchecked invisible stuff will be vis visible again um, okay scale it way down um, a quick tip for like I'm not a fan of the the pointy end to it so if you tweak the the painting again there are end uh, oh, you can see it better if I turn off that um, so this is the start position of it and the end position of it so if you don't like the end you can just go oh, I don't like that bit and I'll chop off that bit to there um, so you can kind of finesse that a bit uh, and that applies to so like say I had oh, say I had some other strokes in there that applies to all of them at the same time so so if I shorten the start they all get shorter from the start or the end um, in case you get some weirdness there that you didn't expect so I'll just delete those uh, that. Um, so I'll take that off a bit. Uh, cool. Uh, but when you see invis um, invisible stuff, those flecks are made invisible by that setting, so then you kind of see a shadow of them. Um, right, so let's make this small. And I find if you put it if you put it like near the end with a little bit hanging out then you can you can line up that end much better with like other cable pieces or um, inputs on devices and whatnot so um, yeah now um, the key setting we want is somewhere in here there is uh, in the physical properties so it's physical you want attach at both attached at both ends this means so if I make it sag just by turning out gravity and the floppiness <coughs> if I didn't have attached at both ends it would only be stuck with the starting point over here um, and the end would drop or move or if you have like some wind moving it that will move um, so if you have a touch of both ends then the physics and wind and gravity and stuff doesn't affect the point at the very tip of that and the very tip of that only the middle so then wind and stuff that point doesn't move and that point doesn't move um, uh, with attached at both ends 
Um, right, so now you want to get this point following this node over here. So if you grab the painting and the node and then group it, so then they move together, which means the starting point moves together. Um, but it also means the end point moves with it as well because it's part of one group. So then you need to attach this end to this node. Um, let's move that there again. So if you scope in and tweak the painting again and then scope back out so you can get to this node, uh, you can go to physics tab again and attach end to object. So you click on that and click on any um, group or sculpt or whatever. So in this case we're clicking on that and it gets, gets this huge bubble around it for some reason and now when you move that end then this point kind of stays in its position relative to this node so if I like rotate it you can watch the end of the point the end of the uh, line so I rotate it and the end of the line moves and kind of follows it and stuff so it's a little bit better if you get the line just right first off and don't have the kind of trailing end bits but it doesn't matter too much because you you're never going to see these nodes anyway so so now you can move this end for that end move this end for that end um, and I tend to group it all together so I can move the whole thing if I want to and then scope in to move them separately so if I cloned that and like flipped it a bit then I could oh, scope in here and move this end of the cable to absolutely spot on like that and like that needs to go over there or something um, oh what's that <laughs> That's really that. Okay. Um, oh, we're getting there. Right, and then when you're in play mode, then you don't see the nodes, you just see the cable. Uh, but it has like a nice kind of ruffle and stretch to it. Um, there's another bit I missed. And that's about it. Is that everything? I think it's everything. Um, yeah, and you can turn on preview invisibility again to hide those nodes and look around. Um, you'll probably get if you stretch it too much you start to get these kind of breaks because it's it's stretching the whole line but the, there's still the same number of flex it doesn't add flex in between them so um, but that might be okay for the kind of <coughs> sketchy cartoony style you're going for anyway or you can do that again scope in Oops and just shorten it so it's not quite so visible. Uh, yeah, and that's about it of how that works. Um, yes. Uh, so you can find, um, no worries mate, um, you can find that by searching for um, sketchy cable and that comes with um, just a wobbly piece and a loop-de-loop -loop piece with a bit of 3D to them as well um, uh, yeah so in here I used it I made one cable it looks pretty hideous from this angle <laughs> but over here it looks okay um, got a cable there and then it goes off into nowhere uh, for the power and then got this other cable 
Oh, that's the power one. Going through a brick and then off into nowhere. Another one plugs into the back of the TV yeah, over here, which for some reason is way up there. it can help to turn visual feedback if you pause with options and then go my preferences you got visual feedback all is like everything outside your group is gray and fuzzed out like blurred out moderate is just blurred out but not gray and then minimal is it doesn't make any difference um there are some some um things you'll still see to help you out but not for groups so I'll just move that like that back to preview invisibility and now it's plugged